Um, hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Um, my name's Heather. I'm grandmother of Florida Milo's oldest daughter and her assistant. And we're glad that you're able to join us today. Um, Mom, I was hoping to ask you about the path and why you um, founded the nonprofit, The Path, and if you can tell us a little bit more about it. The, um, the path came about from a vision. I was instructed to bring people to New Mexico. That was, that was the beginning. And in the instructions, I was told to do it now. That was the word now. And what I did after I received this mandate is to go into prayer because when I was told by an invisible being to do this and to do it now, as a human, I had no idea exactly what it is that I was being told to do. And so this was in the early part of January, 11 years ago. And I remember praying pretty much 24 seven. So January, February, March, April, May, on the fifth month in May, one of the neighbors that had the land of the 40 acres this, this land um, actually was uh, your land, Heather, that you had sold at an owner's contract. The people that were there called me and it was something like not even six o'clock in the morning. And what they said to me was, can you please come down grandma and pick up the keys to the 40 acres? because we're, we're leaving, we're, we're, um, we're leaving the state. So right away, I um, jumped out of bed and got out, put my shawl on and went down to the 40 acres and I received the, the keys. As I stood there on the land by myself, I remember standing on the little porch and I looked all around and I said to the beloved mother, beloved mother, is this where you want me to bring the people to New Mexico? Because those were the words that, that, was, that was the mandate, bring people to New Mexico. And in doing that, it was early, early morning silence. Nothing, nothing was moving, nothing. There was nothing, not anything was moving. And out of nowhere, from the side of the Southwest, this little bit of wind it seemed to me like it was a little draft, just gave me a kiss on the cheek. And I heard the smack like, like that. It was just a little smack. I didn't turn around and, and look towards my right. I just remember touching my cheek and I thought that's confirmation. So I went into prayer and I said to the beloved mother, I said, beloved mother, I, I hear your confirmation, I feel it. 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a sacred bath. We call it Baño Sagrado. And so I did that. I went into the little Hogan and I bathed myself in a sacred way to continue to receive visions, to keep the energy going. Bless myself with the water of the land. The water comes from an underground aquifer. This beautiful, beautiful sacred water. Bless myself and bless my whole body. And I asked the beloved mother to give me another dream, another vision. That night I came home and that night it was full moon. For me, I always have a tendency to vision and dream after the day after the full moon. So I continued my prayer and I was up through that night of the full moon in prayer. But the following day, I had a vision. A path. And the vision was that I saw my daughter Heather coming in through the gate and she came and she stood in the center of the land where I was. And her and I walked together into the four directions of this 40 acres. And together we took a step and then we squatted. And as we squatted, we were releasing our menstrual blessing the land. And so we did this in the four directions. The meaning of all of this, squatting on the land and blessing it, meant that I had to work on the land. I had to start on the land and it gave me the incentive to continue to pray and to um, receive more of the visions and dreams. And of course, it um, accelerated into um, many, many months of visions and prayers. And through the visions uh, and, and these prayers, I received uh, the mandate of making little seed bundles for the future generations, for the babies that are being born. I received the vision of the seed temple. I received the vision of the water temple, received the vision of the fire temple. The wind temple was already in existence and it was here at my house on Main Street. And so all I had to do was move it into the 40 acres. And the vision of the earth temple came about later on. And so all of this took many, many months and many, many volunteers came through. Many people came to visit to see what I was doing because I kept talking to everyone in the four directions because I was traveling with the Council of 13 Indigenous Grandmothers at the time. 
and just letting everybody know that I needed help and that I was doing this. So this is the beginning of how this um, sacred work started. I had previously myself and some colleagues put together a nonprofit that was called the Church of the Spiritual Path. And so when I thought of making the nonprofit, the path seemed to be the best name because in Central America, we acknowledge that the path, our spiritual path, our, our work and what we are doing. And while I had been there working, uh, I had the opportunity to put not only my footprints, but my puppy doggies footprints and uh, people that came to visit, including my teacher, Don Alejandro, um, putting their footprints uh, in cement. And, um, and this is what, um, what we have. We have these footprints uh, lined up in the short little roads going into the different temples. And so this is the spirit of the path, the, um, the footprints. And, uh, and this is what we leave for the future generations. This is our footprints. And that's how it came about. Thanks, mom. Um, I know that a lot of times we're doing um, fundraising for the path and we have our membership program, but I know that sometimes it's a difficult um, thing for us to raise money for the seed temple. And I was hoping that you can explain why you think it's so important that these heirloom seeds are preserved. And I know sometimes you talk about that they're, you know, they have light in them. And maybe you can share a little bit more about that. Um, these seeds um, were brought to the path by um, mainly by three seed keepers. There was Grandma Diana Henry, there uh, was Nancy, from the area of uh, Chicago, Nancy Clem, and also Greg Sean. Um, so these seeds, Diana, her specialty was corn. She studied with um, Mr. Carl Barnes, the corn known, also known as the corn elder. And Nancy brought um, a huge collection of beans. Greg was also is was also a, a student of Carl Barnes, and he brought a lot of other different corn. And so this was the beginning of the of the sea temple. And they uh, managed that and they taught the classes and brought people together and people that were interested in, in seed keeping and uh, brought in uh, young kids from the university um, and elders, not only here, but we invited people from around the globe and um, Right now, this very moment, um, the person that we have coming down and helping us is uh, Leanne from the Rocky Mountain Seed Alliance, and she is the um, director at the moment. And so um, 
we have had uh, people with experience uh, managing. And my job has been to, um, to pray, to pray on the grounds, to remind people that uh, these temples that have been um, set up there are of the four sacred elements of life. That everything that lives needs these four elements of life. The air, the earth, the fire, the water, the fire being the sun. And the temples that were erected according according to the teachings of everyone around the globe is to remind us that we can't, um, we can't do without the water. We can't do without the earth. We can't do without the air. And certainly we cannot do without the sun. So everything that lives needs these elements. And so this, this is um, the beginning of all of this. But everything that is organic, especially these um, heirloom seeds, these sacred seeds, I want to remind everybody that these seeds, like us humans and all of life, are made of light. They have their memory, their DNA, and they need to be preserved. And this is what the beloved mother said. She said to me, as I was being shown to make these tiny, tiny little bundles of seeds with at least three seeds in them. To make these bundles, to have the bundles available for the future generations, for the children that are being born, that children need to be born with a seed bundle. This, this she ex expressed as something being imperative. And to remind the mothers and fathers of the children, to remind the young adults that the seeds are also children. And these children need to be taken care of. They have to have a proper place. A place where they can be pre preserved and protected. And because they are also children of the light, they need prayers. And so that is my job. My job is to pray, to make these little bundles for everybody and to reach out into the four corners of the earth and to remind the children and to remind the adults to take care of all the seeds. And that's, um, the beginning of how this um, started. Thanks, Mom. Um, do you think that's going to be your legacy, the preservation of the heirloom seeds and the path and those temples for humanity? Is that what you want your legacy to be? I, I feel that um, it's something that is um, important because it isn't anything that 
I made up. It's something that I was told to do. It, in other words, it comes from the beyond. It comes from, from the above. It comes from the spirit of guidance, the spirit of the mother that guides us humans. The mother, father, the one that created everything, all of this beauty that is here on the earth. And we as humans are not taking care of the earth. And so I was told to do that. And I am trying very, very hard every day to to take care of these things, to um, make sure that they are taken care of. And I have many invisible helpers that are on the land, around the land, and in the seed temple that are protecting and taking care of through, through the constant prayers. Uh, taking care of um, this responsibility that has been given, not only to me, but it has been given to many, many people around the globe. So um, is it my legacy? Um, I think that people are going to remember me uh, because of this. In other words, uh, um, just being a good listener and allowing myself to be guided by the invisible beings. This is what they want done. Yeah. Thanks, Mom. Um, do you think that it's been harder during the pandemic to, um, I know a lot of times we would have like uh, the support of volunteers coming to help. And I know that, you know, um, also we, our membership kind of um, decreased because of the pandemic and, uh, you know, just the economics and stuff. Do you feel that it's been a little more difficult during the pandemic or um, do you think anything's changed? I think the um, the pandemic uh, made um, um, made it difficult. Um, absolutely, I I really feel that um, when we did not have the pan pandemic, we um, had the doors open and people that wanted to come down uh, were physically there by invitation. And, um, and we would have the store open and um, many things. And I did some teachings there. We had uh, invited some other grandmothers to come down. And so we were able to raise funds that way. But since the pandemic, um, we haven't done any of that. We had to uh, depend on um, the internet uh, to keep our message, message alive. And, and it's been hard. It's been really, really hard um, simply because um, I had to learn something new, like how to use uh, this vehicle of communication. And so it made it um, almost um, like a synthetic way of communicating, not like having another physical person next to you that you can greet and you can touch and you can smile and, you know, and have that conversation. Um, 
like that. So, you know, I, I think about that. I think about how much do we receive, you know, through the internet when, when we speak to each other, yeah. Yeah, I think it's been, um, inter well, you've learned it pretty quickly, you know, and we've had to pivot to changing things to online or the store and do these videos and get information out. Um, and I know that a lot of your friends and people around you have been affected by the pandemic, which has been hard, you know, around you to see, um, you know, friends and family affected by it. Um, is there anything that you want to leave us with, you know, that your hope for like 2021 or 2022 and a message that you have for us during the pandemic? Um, well, the, the message that I'm delivering uh, these days is this beautiful, beautiful vision that um, I had a few weeks back where I was taken to this place that I've never been. It was this huge, huge arena and there were many, many people that I knew and a lot, a lot of humans. And we greeted each other. We were so happy to be together. We were smiling at each other and greeting each other. And it seemed like we had been brought there, all of us. And it was confirmed as we were there. And in this place, I remember looking into the center of this place. And in the center, there was this very, very big uh, oblong table. And around the table were these beings of light. And the table was made out of light. And one of the light beings stood up and acknowledged us and, and said to all of us humans, that we were brought there because they wanted to thank us. They wanted to thank us for all of our prayers that we had planted. All of the prayers that we have been saying, all of the prayers that have been going around the globe because all of these prayers has taken us into another level of existence that we have moved on at this moment into another dimension of existence. And they wanted to thank us for the prayers. And for those of us that perhaps maybe feel that, you know, the prayers are not being heard. This is a confirmation for us to know in our hearts that the holy beings are very happy with us and our prayers. And so I feel encouraged to continue my prayers. And I feel heard. And I feel really, really happy that our prayers is helping everyone, all of us, all of humanity to move into the light and into another direction. So it was a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful vision. So I wanna share that with everybody. So, um, you know, just keep, keep doing your prayers. Thanks, mom. Um, well, I'm glad that we could um, send this out to everyone in the four directions. Is there anything else you wanna 
share before we say goodbye? No, just um, just want to say thank you to everybody and um, just remember the words of the beloved mother. And this is what she said. She said, Flor de Mayo, humanity is made of love and light. So much love and light to everybody. Blessings to you. Thank you.